Now regarding the floor of this posterior triangle, for the floor, now if this is the posterior triangle, we will draw a schematic diagram. Uh, the muscle which is present towards the apex over here, this is a semi spinalis capitis muscle. This is the muscle which is contributing into the floor. The semi spinalis capitis muscle. Just below that, we have a muscle splenius capitis. This muscle is splenius capitis. As we go still lower down, this muscle which is present over here, this is the levator scapulae. The levator scapulae muscle. And further lower down, the muscle fibers which are present like this, these are the muscle fibers of the scalenus medius muscle. The scalenus medius muscle. These are the muscles which are forming the floor of the posterior triangle starting from the apex and going till the base. And all these muscles they are covered by the deep, uh, the pre vertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia. So, all these muscles covered by pre vertebral layer the pre vertebral layer of deep cervical fascia. So, these are the muscles which are forming the floor. Now, we will come to the contents of this posterior triangle. For that again, we will draw a schematic diagram. Now, this is the posterior triangle and we know that the muscle dividing into it into three, uh, it into two subdivisions. This is the inferior belly of omohoid. This is the inferior belly of omohoid. The inferior belly of omohoid. Now, as we talk about the contents of this triangle, we have just mentioned that the cutaneous nerves which are present in the roof, they are piercing the roof and then they are reaching towards the superficial fascia. So, as they emerge from the cervical plexus, some part or we say the initial parts of those nerves, they are forming the contents of this triangle. So, we will just draw over here the supraclavicular nerve going downwards, the transverse cervical nerve going forwards in and horizontally in the neck, the great auricular nerve which is going above towards the angle of mandible and the lesser occipital nerve. We will just label it this is first, second, third and fourth. In this the first is the supraclavicular nerve. So, the initial parts of these nerve, they are forming the contents of this triangle. The transverse cervical nerve. The third is great auricular nerve. And the fourth is lesser occipital nerve. Now, apart from these cutaneous nerves, we have a cranial nerve which is running through this triangle obliquely. It begins, uh, uh, it is basically descending between the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery and then it runs posteriorly and backwards and as it is running posteriorly backwards, it becomes one of the major contents of this posterior triangle. This nerve is spinal accessory nerve. And uh, when it is running obliquely, it is also supplying the two muscles present over here that is the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscle. 
along with the spinal accessory nerve, other structures which are present over here are the C3 and C4 nerve fibers, which are running parallel to this spinal accessory nerve. Now, just near the spinal accessory nerve, we have few lymph nodes which are present over here. So, they are also forming one of the contents of this, the lymph nodes. Now, we come back to the picture over here. Towards the apex of the triangle, there is an artery which is running like this. It is one of the branch of the external carotid artery, a posterior branch which runs posteriorly and backwards towards the occipital region. This artery is occipital artery. This is the occipital artery. So, we will label it as 5 spinal accessory. This is the 6th occipital artery and we are we can very well see that all these structures these are present in the occipital subdivision of the posterior triangle. So, we can write it as we can write it separately the contents of occipital triangle. This is 1 to 6 and then this is the 7th and this is the 8th. Apart from these contents we have towards the lower part of this triangle only we have a nerve which is a branch of the brachial plexus. This is the dorsal scapular nerve. This is the dorsal scapular nerve. So, this is the ninth content. Then a artery which is coming from the subclavian triangle and it is running backwards and horizontally. This artery is transverse cervical artery. So, this is the tenth structure present over here transverse cervical artery. So, here we can see all these structures they are forming the contents of the occipital triangle. Now, if we come towards the subclavian triangle for the contents of subclavian triangle. Now, as we have just used the term subclavian triangle, it is the one which will be having the subclavian vessels. And for that, the one which is present on the most anterior side, this is the subclavian vein. Just posterior to it, we have the subclavian artery. This is the third part of the subclavian artery to be more specific. If I label it as A, then this is B. Then as we go slightly towards this side, this is the brachial plexus and uh, these are to be more specific the trunks of the brachial plexus which are present over here. So, I will label it as C. So, the structures or the contents of the subclavian triangle A, B, C, A is the subclavian vein. the subclavian vein. Then we have subclavian artery, its third part and the trunk, the trunks of brachial plexus, the three trunks of the brachial plexus. These are the major contents of the subclavian triangle. Apart from this, the other structures which are present over here. In the subclavian vein, there is a vein which is which comes and drains into this subclavian vein. This vein is the external jugular vein, which is running uh, anterior to the sternocleidal mastoid, basically running in the superficial fascia or in the roof of this triangle, pierces the roof or the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia towards the lower side and then it drains into the subclavian vein. So, this structure, this is D the external jugular vein. Then apart from this, from the upper trunk of brachial plexus, we have the branches which are arising from this and those are the nerve to subclavius and the suprascapular nerve. So, nerve to subclavius and the suprascapular nerve they also form the contents of this triangle. We come back to this picture over here. The one which is running downwards is the nerve to subclavius. The one which is running slightly backwards is the sub, uh, suprascapular nerve. 
this is E and this one is F. Apart from this, we have lymph nodes which are present over here. The lymph nodes present over here. So, we can just mention it in the contents. Apart from this, we are having lymph nodes. Then the branches of the subclavian artery. The branches of the subclavian artery, which are basically arising from the first part, as they are traversing backwards, they form the contents of this subclavian triangle. And those branches are the suprascapular artery, then we have transverse cervical artery. These are forming the contents of this subclavian triangle. So, all these structures, these are the structures or we say the contents of the occipital as well as the subclavian triangle. In this, the spinal accessory nerve, a very important structure which is one of the content. If we remove enlarged lymph nodes which are present in the posterior triangle or when we are doing any surgery or if there is any nick in the uh, posterior triangle, it may injure this spinal accessory nerve and may lead to the paralysis of channocleidomastoid and trapezius and specifically leads to loss of shrugging movement. Apart from this, we have just mentioned the subclavian artery which is present towards the subclavian triangle over here. We can palpate the subclavian artery by simply by the thumb by putting the thumb over here in the subclavian triangle. So, this is regarding the posterior triangle. 